Good day, everyone, and welcome back to Station Ears. All right, so it's a brand new day here. We've got our free primary machines here. Uh, we're not going to be using the auto lathe. Uh, we just finished uh, getting what we needed from the auto lathe there from the last episode. Uh, and I also had some time to go out and do some prep work for this episode, so we can jump straight into uh, what we're going to be doing in this video. So specifically, we're going to be constructing the furnace. Now, all right, we've already got an arc furnace here, you're probably thinking, right? So why do we need some kind of regular furnace here? Well, there's something that the arc furnace can't do that we need it to do. So we need to build a special furnace that's going to allow us to uh, do some other things. But it's not going to work the same way as the uh, arc furnace does either. The arc furnace, if you recall, only takes electricity and then you put in whatever it is you need to smelt and it comes out the back there after it's done smelting. The furnace works very differently. Uh, for some people, they absolutely hate the furnace. I'm not a big fan of the furnace based on past experience here, uh, but I'm, I, I'm over my trauma and if you've, you know, if you know what I'm talking about, about how this thing works, you you may have had a traumatic experience with it as well. Uh, but hopefully, if you you know don't know how to use it, this will help you. So we're going to place down the furnace here. And we're going to end up with just this first stage of construction. There's more work that needs to be done on the furnace. And something I should have mentioned in the first episode, or in the second, and so on and so forth. The third would have been nice as well. Uh, if, if you hit F1, you'll get the Stationpedia. Okay, and so if I, for uh, so in the Stationpedia will, is honestly your best source for figuring out how to make stuff. So for example, today we're going to try and make some steel because we're going to need steel to make pipes. So if we type in steel, here's everything that's made with steel and stuff, but we're going to click on steel ingot here. Steel ingots are a metal alloy crafted in a furnace by smelting ore iron and ore coal in a ratio of 3 to 1. It may not be elegant, but ice oxide and ice volatiles can be combined at a ratio of 1 to 2 in a furnace to create the necessary gas mixture for smelting. Okay, let's go over this here. Alright, we're going to make steel. To make steel, it needs to be made in a furnace, and it needs to be in a mixture of free iron to one coal. Okay, steel is an alloy. Alright, the furnace allows us to make alloys, and there's other alloys in the game, just to name, you know, a couple, there's, of course, Electrum, which is silver and gold. Um, there's also Invar. Um, you're not going to use that, at, you know, most of these, um, most of these alloys you don't really use too much, but uh, when you need them, you need them. So what we're going to do is we're going to make some steel here, and unfortunately, steel is the alloy you will need the most, because it's used in a lot of stuff there. Specifically, though, it takes this uh, gas mixture here, alright? Specifically ice oxides and ice volatiles. So oxygen and hydrogen, specific, well specifically H2, alright? Um, and we're gonna combine them in a ratio of one oxide to two volatiles, alright? All this will make more sense once we get it built, but you'll see that it can also, you know, this will show you how you can make it and stuff. And specifically the tier one furnaces here, not really sure why it's listed the way it is here twice. Um, huh. That's kind of odd. I, I never noticed that's in here twice. In fact, the advanced furnace. Is, yeah. All right, that's kind of odd. But specifically, oh, it's in here free. T oh, what? Oh well, yeah, requirements one time. All right, yeah, that I get that. Oh, okay, wait, hydrocarbon, right? So basically, this will tell you that in order to make steel, you need a temperature of 900 Kelvin, or 627 degrees Celsius, to 100,000 Kelvin, or, good grief, big number, 99,726 degrees Celsius. And we need to have a pressure of 1 megapascal to 100 megapascals inside the furnace. Again, all this will make more sense once we construct the furnace. But as you can see, 0.75 iron and 0.25 carbon will get us one steel. All right, we're not going to be making one. All right, so let's take a look at actually building it here. So I'm just going to remove my mining belt there for now. We'll get our belt here. 
The furnace is actually pretty simple. All we're going to need is a total of four iron sheets and two tools. So first we're going to use our wrench here with two iron sheets. That's the first. So we're on to second stage of construction. And now we're going to take our torch. And just like that, the furnace is complete. But we're not quite done yet. So let me turn on my flashlight here. In fact, let me swap my batteries. Yep, this is, uh, this is ticked over there. All right. So. Also, let's, uh, no, we're going to need that still. Looking at our furnace here, you will find, and I do apologize for all the, you know, all the markings on the helmet there. I, I reset my settings, and I don't know what setting that is to fix it. Um, so we'll just have to live with it for now. The furnace is pretty odd. I mean, you know, we've got an output at the bottom. We got an input at the top. We got a data connection at the top. We're not going to be using this. At least not yet. Um, then we've got this weird lever here. We'll get into what that does. We got some kind of a meter there. And we've got a button. A big red button. And we got a little window here. And we got these free ports on the back. So let's go over everything. Uh, first of all, the button, because that's the easiest one to talk about, that's the activate button. Uh, that's what's going to actually start everything in there. The lever here is, uh, is, is opens up the mold, which allows us to eject the ingots we're going to create out the bottom there. All right. The meter here is going to tell us what the pressure inside the chamber is, as well as the temperature. If you recall, steel has certain requirements for it. Truth be told, those requirements, you don't have to worry too much about them. When you work with other alloys, though, you might need a certain pressure or certain temperature. Without that certain temperature or pressure, it will not create the alloy you need. So the contents of it can be viewed in the little window there. And that's pretty much everything up front here. Um, there's a little bit more, and we'll get into it when we get to it. But we got all this stuff in the back here. So, we're going to actually introduce another thing here. Let's talk about pipes. Uh, there are two types of pipes in the game. There's liquid pipes, which is would be hooked up to output 2 here. And then there is kind of just plain pipes. These are for gases, alright? And they look like these connections here. This is an input, this is an output. What we're going to do is we're going to take a pipe here, and we're going to make a 90 degree bend here. We're going to... Take that 90 degree bend. I think I've got this lined up right. And we're going to place it there like so. And then we're going to take a straight piece and we're going to place it here. We're skipping this piece in between there. Because we're going to put a valve in between the two pipes. So it should be noted, if you look at this pipe, see how it's sealed there? You don't have to worry about gases escaping. Esca bleh, escaping. Having a hard time saying escaping, apparently out the pipe, they're capped off like that, all right? You don't need some kind of special cap for pipes. Now these pipes are connected, all right? So the reason we're putting a valve here is that, well, we need one more thing here. And we're going to have to make that. So if we go into our hydraulic pipe bender and we type in vent, you'll see that we have a couple of options here. Uh, we have an insulated passive vent, a passive vent, and an active vent. All right, we're going to make a passive vent here. This is what we need. Uh, passive vents are quite cheap. It's only three units of iron. All right, we're done with this. Uh, we're also done with our sheets. Let me put those away before I forget them. All right, so let's take a look at these vents here. Here we have our passive vent, or sorry, our active vent. And here we have our passive vent. So there's a big difference between these two vents. Um, first of all, uh, it's the obvious thing is in the name. Active versus passive. All right, so one is actively doing something, the other is passively doing something. Specifically, they both take on, um, sorry, this side. They both connect up to a gas pipe here. All right, the difference is in terms of connections, the active one also requires electricity because there's essentially a little impeller in there that's going to either suck or blow air depending on what we set it to. 
So we can set it to inward or we can set it to outward, all right? And then we got a power switch here. So if this was plugged in and this was on, this would actually be uh, blowing air out of it. And if I flip it over to inward, this would suck air into the pipes. But we don't need to uh, have any power here for what we're doing. We're going to use the passive vent here. So we're going to take our passive vent and we're going to place it on the end of this pipe here. This is why we need this valve here. All right, it will make more sense in a moment, but basically we're going to add some gases into the uh, furnace there. And we don't want those gases escaping. We want them to stay inside uh, the chamber. All right, we only want them to release when we flip the lever to the open position here. All right, uh, when the valve is open, this will allow all of the gases to escape from our furnace out the vent and it, well, it's out into space. Well, the zero atmosphere that is the moon in this game. All right, so we want to make sure that's in the closed position when we use the furnace. All right, when we're done with the furnace, we can vent. All right, so how do we actually use the furnace? Now, first of all, you want to wait till it's nighttime because if we were to handle the stuff we're going to be handling here during the day, uh, it would, yeah, it would melt the, in our hands. The ice would melt and we don't want the ice to melt. So as you can see, I've got our one oxide here. All right, I can hold it, it's not gonna melt. So I'm gonna put our one oxide in. I'm also gonna get our two uh, volatiles here. And as you can see, if we go over here, it's gonna say that there's one oxide inside the contents there. And it's, you know, filled up one, uh, it hasn't done anything else there, right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the activate button. That's going to open up the hatch again. We're now going to put our two volatiles in there. All right. Now, after this, things are going to have to, you know, things are going to move a little bit quickly here. Okay. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab something here just so that I make sure I don't forget this stuff. Because, um, in a well, we'll get to that. So now I'm going to put my two volatiles in. All right. If we look here, it shows that the contents contains two ice volatiles and we're starting to build up temperature and pressure already. So I'm gonna hit the activate button here. Next, we're going, you know, so if you look, it's actually starting to consume our fuel there. So I'm gonna put in my 25 coal. That's gonna be our, our hydrocarbons, basically. I'm gonna put in 25 iron and I'm gonna put in an additional 50 iron. So if we look in there, it's melting down the iron, it shows the 25 hydrocarbons, and now it says that it will output 100 units of steel. And that's what we want to do, so I'm going to open the mold, and there's our 100 units of steel. All right. But we can also still use the heat in there. I'm going to smelt some silicon. So as you can see, it's melting down the silicon quite quickly, may I add. This is a lot faster than using the arc furnace. Gonna melt down some copper as well there. So if you have a lot of stuff that you need to smelt, you know, and stuff, and you're you're willing to spend the gases to do it, the furnace is a very good option. So there's actually still more stuff we could smelt, but I don't actually have uh, any more material, you know, anything else really to smelt. So we're gonna leave it there with that. As you can see, though, you know, we still got quite a few pre a bit of pressure in there. If we take out our, um, I think I have to, I forgot to switch this over. Uh, if we take out our um, data pad here, and we're gonna, our handheld tablet, I should say. Let's swap it. By the way, I, I never showed this. You can hold down Alt if you don't wanna navigate with the keys. But uh, if we open this up, we can see that there's uh, still some volatiles in there. Uh, as you can see, we generate some pollution, some nitrogen, some CO2, some O2 still is in there. And if we look in this pipe network, it's the exact same thing as what's in there, okay? If we look at this pipe, we won't see anything because the valve is blocking it. And so the valve's doing its job. We're done with the furnace for now, so let's go ahead and just vent it. So with the valve in the open, all that gas is escaping there. Um, as you can see, it's starting to escape from, uh, it's, you know, if we have a pipe network there. I didn't actually check, what was, yeah, 500 and something degrees Celsius there is what it's currently at, and it's probably cooled quite a bit. So as you can see, that's a good way of smelting uh, your materials there. 
and it's the only way to get steel, pretty much. Now, I shall warn you. If you didn't do this right, if you messed up in some way, let's say I put the wrong amount of coal in there and I didn't catch it, and I used the eject here on the mold, what would end up happening is you wouldn't get steel, you would get, um, regents, alright? Now, regents are basically materials that need to be, uh, I think it's the centrifuge that the, let me check here. Um, I thought I saw it on the home screen. The regents is a broad category for referring to all different, you know, kind of ingredients and stuff, pretty much. But there's specifically regents as themselves, and I'm not seeing it in here. Oh, no wonder I spelt it wrong. There's an E in regents. Hmm. I'm trying to look for the exact thing that I'm wanting to showcase here. Um, uh, I think it's the, uh, is it the recycler? Let's see here. I mean, I think that will go into it. Destroying an item produces Regent Mix. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. Regent Mix is a pure, oh, it's his pure potential. A slurry of un... Wow, I didn't expect to see that. Undifferentiated ores. It is an output by the recycler and can be fed into the centrifuge to separate and recover the individual materials. Regent mix is also output by the furnace when the current contents are rejected without smelting a specific ingot. So if you get your recipe wrong, you're going to get these uh, regent mix. And the only way you can do, you know, you'll need a centrifuge in order to recover your materials that you put in there. Obviously, you're not going to get your gas. So that's why, you know, it's, you know, when you first do it, it's a little bit nerve wracking because you don't want to mess it up. Uh, but it's actually pretty easy to use the furnace. So one more thing we're going to quickly create here uh, before we wrap this episode up is we're going to make another gas canister here. Because if you've noticed, my suit is getting quite full there. So specifically, that is the waste tank. If we, uh, let's, uh, let's look at the waste tank, it would contain um, a bunch of, uh, <laughs> it's going to contain all of the carbon dioxide I've been breathing out, minus that which has been lost due to me opening my helmet. But uh, eventually you're going to have to replace one, so you're going to make a uh, empty, you're going to need to make a canister here to replace your current waste tank. And then you can just swap them like so. Done. I recommend you hold on to this canister because that's carbon dioxide there and we're gonna need this carbon dioxide later. Uh, it's gonna help with uh, something that's mm, a little ways off. I think we're gonna focus more on power but in particular we're also gonna focus on create, you know, it's the next thing we're gonna create. It's gonna go in here and it's gonna help with our water situation. We're gonna try and create um, a better water situation. So that's what's planned for the next episode. I hope you enjoyed uh, this video. If you did, you know, please hit the like button. It helps out a lot. You know, helps other people know that, hey, this is worth watching. Likewise, if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to the channel. It would mean a lot to me. All right, have a great day, everyone.